We welcome to the show, Jamie Lawson. How's it going? Okay. Thank you very much, Chris. How are you? Yeah, not bad. So you're releasing a new five track EP called Talking Pictures. What can you tell us about it? Um, well, that's a good question already. <laughs> um, I guess it's a mixture of old and new songs. There are songs I've written during lockdown and there are a couple of songs on here that I've had that didn't make other albums, but that I really liked, but um, didn't make other albums for reasons of being, they just, they weren't recorded in a way that I was happy with, or they didn't fit with the other songs as well. So um, I'm always quite happy to save and hang on to things if that's the case. And the song Together, for instance, on this EP, that's very much uh, an example of that. That was recorded for the last album, but uh, for whatever reason, I just wasn't happy with it. And um, I kind of produced this one myself or uh, with uh, the producer, Tim Ross, who I work with a lot. And I think we got it right this time. And also I think it sits within these songs better than it would have the other songs. So, yeah. And you've been quite busy during lockdown, haven't you? I suppose so. I mean, this is the second EP of the year. Third, if you count the lockdown versions, which we did, we, we did a load of um, me and the band kind of were doing lockdown versions of kind of flying files to each other and recording ourselves playing along and that sort of thing. And we put an EP together of that as well as my first album, my debut album coming out on vinyl for the first time. So I, I suppose I have been quite busy. On top of that, uh, my wife had a baby in February, so uh, that's kind of kept me busiest, I suppose. Yeah, definitely. Of course, you haven't had any live gigs this year, but um, hopefully next year. Yeah, I'm, I'm booked in already to play with Deacon Blue, opening for them at, in October. That should have been a tour that was happening right now, but obviously has been postponed. So fingers crossed things can get back to some sense of normality on that front. Um, I, I don't know how they're going to do it, but uh, I assume by, by October we'll be okay. Fingers crossed. So you have collaborated with Robert Vincent on, a, on track three of the EP, Out of This World. What was it like working with Robert? Robert's great. I don't know if you know his stuff. He's a, an Americana kind of uh, singer out of Liverpool. Uh, I got to meet him at a songwriting retreat just outside of Glastonbury that's run by Chris Difford of Squeeze and Bob Harris's family. So um, we didn't get to write together. Basically what happens on these, on these weeks is um, you get paired up with different writers each day and you get put, put in different groups. And then at the end of the day, you have to sing your new song to everyone else. And it's one of the most nerve wracking things I've ever had to, to, to do because you're just, you know, you're playing brand new songs uh, in front of world class songwriters. Uh, and you're just saying, judge me, judge this, judge this thing that I've just done. Um, so, um, but it was just brilliant. The, the songs are incredible that got written. Um, so I didn't get to write with Robert that week. So he came over to the house and um, we just set about trying something. Usually you might start with uh, a few chords that you already have or a, a song title or something like that. But Robert was very much of the frame of mind of saying, let's just see what happens. And uh, out of this world is what happened. It's, uh, um, it's a kind of odd song in a way. It's, you know, it's got two middle eights. One of them has a key change. It's, it's quite unusual, um, but it's, it's, a, it's a cracking song, really. Yeah, and that, like you say, that must have been quite intimidating, singing that for the first time. Well, we didn't write that there, so... Um, oh! I, I, ex exactly, yeah, this was written afterwards, so... But, um, but yeah, on the day, the, those, the songs we did write, I was always very nervous, yeah. But what, what songs did you write on the day there? Um, none that have seen the light of day. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Make Maybe in the future. You will. Possibly. <laughs> there was a couple that I really liked. And the good thing about it was that you made these kind of relationships that you then, you know, took on afterwards. For instance, Robert, who I didn't write with that week. And also I got to, I, I wrote with Ricky Ross from Deacon Blue later after the event, because he was on this so songwriting week. And I did get to write with Beth Nielsen Chapman, who I'm a big fan of, 
but we didn't finish our song. So we've been kind of working on it since going mm. backwards and forth and, you know, over email and stuff. So um, hopefully I'll write with a few of those people again. So, so it's good. You can do that. You can leave it and you can always come back to it, I guess. Uh, every song is like that, isn't it? I mean, I mean, that's, uh, you know, with that in mind, the song, when, uh, when you were mine from the EP, the chords for that, the piano chords for that I've had for about three years and only finished it during lockdown um, because I could never quite find the lyric that I thought fit it really well. Uh, I always knew what sort of style of song I was trying to write. I wanted to write this kind of old Tom Waits type song or uh, Randy Newman type of thing, you know. Uh, so I, I knew what I was after and I, it just never came along. And then for whatever reason, um, this year it's, it's, it's come and joined us. Yeah, it's quite a long process, isn't it? I don't think people always realise. It can be. Absolutely, it can be. But I, I can... Uh, imagine that the song like all because of you came very quickly because i have no notes on it and i have no voice not vo you know voice uh notes that do different things it's just there in one piece so uh for that reason i assume i don't remember <laughs> <laughs> i really don't remember but i assume it was just there yeah and it was written back in 2017 isn't that right possibly yeah <laughs> um uh, I, I yeah i think I, I wrote that song for my wife um, and how, you know, I, I feel kind of different since we met and um, weirdly now that Billy has come along, um, it's taken on a new meaning again, really. And Together was co-written by Barry Dean and Troy Vergas, who have written hits for Taylor Swift, Little Big Town, Keith Urban and many more. Uh, you started playing together at the start of lockdown, didn't you? What do you mean playing together? Um, well, well, the information I got was that you um, you did the song uh, on a live set during lockdown. Oh, I see. Yeah. So I did a kind of um, at, at, in the first lockdown, I was doing these Instagram live shows once a week um, and I would choose a different theme. So I, I did a covers week and then um, I did like a request show and things like that. Um, but one of the weeks I did unheard material basically so i road tested some songs and uh together was one of the songs i road tested uh and it got a very kind of positive response from the people that were tuning in so uh, i i thought maybe i was onto something there but I, I wrote it in nashville um in 2018 i think um with barry dean like you said and troy verges and yeah barry's um a songwriting legend there really to be honest i was very fortunate to work with him uh, you know you mentioned the role the, ro the roll call there little big town and taylor swift he's, he's had some big songs so um and he was he was brilliant to work with really good really good i was really chuffed to get that out and that must have been great uh, going to nashville it was yeah it was a real eye-opener as a songwriter um they're incredibly quick uh, their ideas just flow and flow and flow and they just fire them at you. I must admit I was taken by surprise at first. I couldn't keep up at all and I didn't know what I was doing. I felt completely out of my depth and I had to kind of, you know, try and slow them down a lot. Uh, not just Barry, but other writers that I was working with. Uh, I had to mention that they weren't allowed to write about trucks or beers or girls because that's what they were used to writing about. And I was saying, you just, we, we don't do those things <laughs> in the UK. You can't go driving all night because you'll just drive off a cliff. It's, it's not long <laughs> enough, you know? So I had to put some boundaries on what they would write about, which was, you know, a challenge for them in a way. Um, but it was, it was a really interesting uh, experience. I think I was there for 11 days and got nine songs, which is pretty good. Uh, I think three of them ended up on the last album and then, um yeah one on this one i'm trying to think if there was one on the moving images ep but i can't remember no whiskey either that must have been another one yeah no drinking no alcohol <laughs> it's just not my thing so uh yeah and uh, the final song on the ep when you were mine is a bit sweet love song that you've written what can you tell us about that well i, I already said like that it was, it's one of those songs that, that musically i just had for a long time um, I would, I, I don't really, I have a keyboard here, but I don't have a piano, but anytime I would sit at a piano, I had, I would play those chords 
that the song kind of starts with. And um, yeah, it's, it's interesting how sometimes you just have to have that patience and not force a song, but knowing whether to force a song or not is a skill. Um, because sometimes I know if I push through on this, it's going to come, it's going to come, it's going to come if I push through. Whereas this, it was like, just wait, just hang on, just hang on, it'll come. And it did. And it's odd, I don't know what that instinct is or why you would go one way or the other, but it, it, it's definitely there. That's interesting, isn't it? Because some people, they have to lock themselves in a room to do it, or as you say, it just comes. Well, I would, I mean, I generally lock myself in a room as well. I, I, I try and write, or I did most days. Uh, I, I, I don't have that uh, time now. But um, I always thought uh, you, you can't just, you can't just, um, it's, this will sound slightly contradictory, but you can't just wait for inspiration to come. You do have to keep working and keep working and keep working. But it's when ideas, you know, partly ideas, part of the idea comes along like this with the piano and knowing that the lyric isn't ready yet. It's just those sort of things. It means you just go and write something else and you just wait your time and come back to it in a month or two and then come back to it in a month or two, you know, that kind of thing, which is the case here. And you're, you're also one of Whispering Bob's All Stars to feature on the reworking of the B King classic Stand By Me, which is to help raise funds for help musicians. Uh, that was a bit different, wasn't it? <laughs> is that good or bad <laughs> no it's a good it's a good song obviously i mean it's a classic but obviously i mean it's a good song yeah but i mean different for you i get i mean it must be a very different situation because it's all it's all different singers isn't it a bit like a um live aid situation yeah exactly like that i mean at the time of being asked i had no idea who else would be on it it was just kind of um, very happy to have been asked, very honoured to have been asked by Bob. Um, obviously, the man is a legend, so you're not really going to say no to Bob Harris. Um, yeah, I, I'm really glad to be a part of it. They actually even used my acoustic guitar, which I was very shocked because I only put it in to help me sing <laughs> sing the song. They basically just sent out the bass line and said, sing along to that. And it's like, well, I can't really do that. So... Um, yeah, um, it came out brilliantly. I think uh, Miles, uh, Bob's son, uh, he did a brilliant job of piecing that together and making it sound very, well, organic in a way, considering the way it was done, which is by people all over the world sending in different different files and different uh, parts. You know, he's, he's, he made it gel very well. Yeah, I, th I think it's very good. And... Um... So when are you going to be, you said, when is the EP going to be released? So the EP is released 27th of November. So, um, soon. Yes. Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Wow. That's good. So, so with the last album, uh, you, you did it on vinyl in the end, didn't you? That, that, that must've been good. All my albums now have come out on vinyl. All of them? Ah. Yeah. So all five. So the, the, actually the, the debut album, was the last to, to be added to the collection. Um, so uh, I'm really chuffed. I mean, as a kid, I was a, a record collector. It was my thing and it was kind of all I spent my pocket money on, you know? So to have my own records, my own recordings on vinyl, it means a lot to me. Um, I'm hoping, like I've made, um, at the beginning of this year, I released an EP called Moving Images and then now I have a, an EP called Talking Pictures. And basically, they're kind of A and B sides, really. That's the way I look at it. So I'm hoping that there'll be a, a, a fully formed record at some point, too. Great. And it seems that artists are going back to records, aren't they? It seems, seems to vinyl, a lot of artists. Maybe. Yeah, to vinyls. Yeah. Yeah. Vinyl. I mean, I think so. Obviously, we're in a really odd position at the minute where... Um, obviously, we can't make money out of live shows and... CD sales are down, but it seems that vinyl is on the increase again, which is uh, a nice thing. Uh, I certainly prefer it as a format. I think it's a nice thing to explore, to hold, to put on and, you know, put the needle on. Um, so, uh, yeah, I'm kind of glad that it's still still around. You, you kind of hear an album more in its entirety, don't you, on a record? Quite possibly, yeah. You're more willing to invest the time in 
uh, yeah, sitting down and listen, listening through it. Yeah, you're right. I know with me, if I've got a CD or something, if you don't like a certain track, it's quite easy to skip it. <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah. But... And the same with streaming, I suppose. And just to find anything else and hit shuffle or whatever it is, you know, that sort of thing. But yeah, maybe that's the, the, uh, the selling point of it is you're, you can sit down for 45 minutes to an hour and just immerse yourself in something like that. But with some songs, you can you don't like them at first necessarily. You have to listen to them eight or nine times, and and then you get it sometimes. Yeah, I mean it's often the way, isn't it? You might buy an album for a certain song, um, you know, which starts off being your favorite and will end up being your least favorite because you found all these others and uh, you discover things, and then you, as you say, you you replay and you replay, and other things creep in. And uh, I, I like the slow burner as a song, you know, those are my favorites, usually the ones that take a while to creep in and uh, reveal themselves to you. The ones that aren't uh, um, so willing to jump on you and say, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. You know, I like the one that just invites you in gently. Great. Well, it's been uh, great talking to you, Jamie. Um, Thank we'll get you. a couple of your tunes on. What ones would you like us to play on the show? Oh, please, uh, if you can play Out of This World, that'd be great. And if you're going to play another, then uh, why not play All Because of You? Because uh, we talked about that too. So Great. Thanks for joining us, Jamie. Cheers Pleasure. for that. Pleasure. No problem.